thanks for stopping by my channel today. Today's video is me just sharing with you my preparations for my first craft show of the year. I am so ready to get started. Craft shows are my main source of income and I I am needing that income right now. <laughs> I've spent so much money the last couple months. <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> I need to do well at this first craft show. Now this is a four day over two weekends. So it's a Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday craft show. Yeah, so I thought I would just share with you my process of getting ready, how I do my inventory, how I pack up, all that good stuff. First things first is I went through and I printed off new labels. So everything on my table has what it, what it is and how much it is. And I just print these on cardstock. Every year I like to start fresh because they get kind of bent and maybe dirty and different things like that. So I have my labels cut and I have them organized by, you know, home scents and face products and creams and butters and different things like that. Because what I will do is as I pack up, I will pull the label and put it in my envelope. There has been more times that I've gone to a craft show where I thought I had a label and I never did. I'm gonna take you into my next room where I have all of my products and we're gonna start counting. I do a Google spreadsheet and I list all of my products. Now I can export those. You can export them to Excel, but I don't have Excel, so then I have to convert it over to Google Sheets. But you can export all of your products out of Soapmaker 3. And then I just organize them how I like for them to be organized and I like them to be alphabetized <laughs> and I am very particular about the order, <laughs> but I have those and I'm just going to be marking how many I'm putting in each container so that I can then put those in the Google Sheets when I'm all done boxing up. All right. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this sheet, but I've already packed up my goat milk lotions. So I have three lavender and three sea salt orchid that I'm taking. So I'm just marking this with a pen for now. Same thing with my liquid um, soaps, three and three. So I will take this and put my markings on the computer so it looks better than my handwriting. So I have these totes. I really try to find something lighter, but honestly soap is heavy and I can get about six boxes in here and this is actually just the perfect size to hold six boxes of soap. So, and it has good handles. So I've kept them. I use them sometimes for my displays, sometimes not. But I'm gonna pack up soap first. So here's a, my box of Indian sandalwood. Now I will not take all of my soap to a craft show. If I have to restock over the weekend or between the two weeks, I will. But I usually take anywhere from 10 to 15 bars to a craft show. And I rarely ever sell out of a soap scent. Uh, so I'm going to start with 12 just because this is over four days. I'm just going to take out everything but 12 and then put them in the box. I'm going to find Indian sandalwood. All right. I have more boxes than I normally do <laughs> of soaps. Uh, the top two boxes... Let me just show you those. These are my last chance. I say get them before they're gone. These are just random soaps that I have probably five or fewer bars of each. But here's my shelf afterwards. <sighs> and I have my liquid soap starting in this big blue toe. I have a couple liquid soaps and then these are my liquid soap and lotion sets. So I think I'm, so, since my blue tote is down, I'm gonna get started on my scrubs and my creams. So guys, when I am going to shows, I really like to do everything in threes if I can. So I will pull three of every size of every scent of my creams, my scrubs, my shampoo bars, everything. I usually just take three. And on a bigger show like this next one, which is a four day show, a lot of times I will do five of each size. I'm gonna do five this time. <laughs> I need to make more creams too. I, I do not have near enough lavender or pink quartz. I only have one free weekend and I am really, really busy with family next weekend. So I'm really not sure if I'm gonna to get to making any creams at all. But I'm just gonna pull what I can 
and go from there <laughs> and count scrubs and creams are in my big blue tote next I'm going to do my wax melts and I have one tote or crate from Walmart left I'm going to put those in there <sighs> I'm getting out of breath <laughs> And we'll just kind of keep plugging away. I'm pulling my signs as soon as they're in the totes. I'm putting them in my envelope here. I have a note that I need um, to make a sign. I have one uh, sample tester. This is Smell Through Biodegradable Film. But I do find that people sometimes struggle smelling completely. So I will cut a little slit in, in between one of these little bricks. For wax melts, I'm going to be taking eight of each packaged scent and then I'm going to still count that I have the one tester because people will buy that. When I'm out of wax melts, they'll still buy that tester and they're happy to do that. So, Okay guys, this is actually day three and I realized that I kind of cut off at the packing up to then day two and I didn't tape anything in between. So what happened is I packed up my car quite full. I couldn't get all of my uh, products in there, so my husband had to bring the truck to bring the rest of my products, but my display items take up a lot more room than uh, they used to. I'm on a corner booth, which I really like, but with my new setup with this rack behind me, I really can't utilize the corner like I used to. I used to be able to do shoppers on both sides, and uh, with this rack, the only way I could do that is to have this rack facing out away from me, and I can't see what people are looking at. I mean, there's a concern for theft, but more than that, it's engagement. I can't like say, hey, there's a clearance rack on the bottom, or hey, what's your favorite scent? Those kind of things. So the engagement's really important to a craft show, so I do have to have people walk into my space. So having the corner space doesn't gain me what it used to, the two sides of shoppers. So let me show you the rack. Now I will say, guys, that my wax cells, wax melt cells have plummeted since I got rid of the clamshells. And I don't know if people aren't just recognizing what that is. I really don't know, uh, but they have really plummeted. So I did purchase this sign above to let people know exactly what this rack is. And we'll just see what happens. I've shown you these trays before, but I do have these trays on my Amazon uh, shop page or whatever. It's linked down below. They fit the wax molds perfectly if they weren't in the box. So now I just kind of stack them. And I have my tester right in front so that they can see what that is in the box and then they can smell all of that. This rack, I will also try to find where I bought that. I paid way too much money for it. I, I think I paid over $500 for this rack. And we thought the black was metal and it's wood. So, way too much money. But I do, do really like this rack. I think it really adds to my booth a lot. Let me take the camera off and I'll show you some more. So these are just your standard crates I got from Walmart that I stained. I got this rack here. It's tall. It's a little janky. But I liked how it was a very small footprint and it had some height to it. I got that at at home store. All my soaps are in shoe boxes. These are youth shoe boxes I get from Uline. And at one point, I changed this out. Let me show you how I had it. I kind of had my soaps like that with a little tag in front showing what it was. But my husband and I both agreed that it didn't uh, draw the eye like the shoe boxes do, so we went back to the shoe boxes. The gain of that is these shoe boxes take up a lot of space in my car, and I, I could put a lot of soaps in a small amount of space. But the shoe boxes are better, and we're going to keep them. And then over here, more rack crates from Walmart. And then I got this, I don't know if you're going to see it very well from at home it's just this shelf it's got little casters on it that doesn't really do much for me but i think it's cute and it holds all my creams and scrubs i have these little tubs i forget where i bought those years ago i have my solid bubble bath in this tub i think it looks really cute and it's very eye-catching so i have this just for display so just showing you that this is what they purchased with all the ingredients and everything I got this at T TSC last year. I think it's cute and it matches my bathtub. 
got my bathtub at Big R Guys and that is no longer a store, I don't believe. I think they're out of business. And because I am on a corner, I do have everything on this rack turned towards this outside corner, just so people can see what's on this rack. And then I can say, hey, I have testers on this other side if you wanna come in. And then that's what they, they will do. They'll come over here. But I have little pots of testers so people can smell those. And down here I have like clean sticks, little testers of all my creams in front of those. And I have smell testers for my butters and my luxury lotion bars. And then that's how I have my lip balms now. I used to have my lip balms in the tub, but I changed it to this so that they're organized. It's the same thing for my shower steamers. I have these just in this tub. That is more for display. On my table here, I have a box ready to go and I have my labels here. So if they want a shower steamer, I will box it and label it as I go. But I think seeing them and smelling them on the table and how cute they are is a sell factor. All right guys, so that is my booth set up for this show. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Again, this is day three, but I'm gonna plug in day two now and uh, let you know how I rearranged some things. Cause I did, I did move quite a bit of my products around after I got here after the first day, I realized I needed to make some changes. So I'll plug that in now and then I'll just see what I can do on the other side of that. All right guys, it is day two of this show and I wanted to show you my booth setup where I'm walking in now uh, and what I made changes yesterday. There were quite a few changes I made. I just wasn't happy with them. So I'm always ready to uh, make a bit of a change and move things around to see what's gonna work best for the space that I have and the products that I have because my products, as you may well imagine, always change. Um, so let me take the camera down and I'm gonna show you this. All right, so the first thing I did was my clearance shelf had non-clearance stuff on it. So I have my bath salts and my milk soaks um, on clearance, so I moved those off the other shelf and put those down there. I removed my pine bergamot and my pumpkin off of my candle shelf just to give those a little bit more space. And then I spaced out my room sprays. I just felt like yesterday everything was just so crowded. There's those cute little donuts I made the other day. And then nothing's changed on my wax melt display. So what I did was I ended up taking my white table, if you can see the edge of it, and I scooched it forward so that I could have two more feet over here just for a few extra things. I just felt like this was very, very um, crowded. And so I moved my dish soap over here with kind of my home stuff. I've got my wax melts, um, some, some of those extra candles, my snaps, those things over here next to my dish soap. I just felt like having that next to this tall rack was the best place for those. And then I was able to kind of move this back a little bit and give this a little bit more room right through here. I removed, this is where my milk baths were. And I had some of these liquid soaps down here. I had my kitchen soap down there, which that didn't make any sense to me, so I moved them back up. <laughs> and my clay masks, I have a new sign. I think my signs are way too small. So I'm gonna be doing a new sign that's bigger and just a little bit more eye-catching. And my shower steamers, I'm not super happy with them down there, but I really don't know where else to put them at this point. And then everything over here is pretty much the same other than um, I moved these from my clearance rack for some reason. Those were on clearance. They're not on clearance. They were just down on that rack. It didn't make any sense. I found a way to get those over here by my other bath soaks and balms. And so that's what it looks like today. I do have lights on all of these that I will be turning on. So there they are with the lights on. I bought lights for this yesterday, so those are gonna go up as soon as I get off of here. And I have bought lights for under here. So here's my wax melts before lights. There they are without lights. So it just lights them up a bit. I bought lights to go under this shelf 
to light up my candles a little bit. All right, guys, I'm gonna get off here and get set up, and I will see you soon. All right, guys, it's been a couple days since the end of my craft show, so I just thought I would come on here, quickly share with you how I do the end of a show kind of uh, inventory type of thing. I will share, it ended up being a pretty good craft show for me. It, it probably is my highest sales of the number of years I've been to this one. So I was almost at two grand for the four days. I was probably like a hundred off of two grand. Last year it was like 1750. This year it was like closer to that 1900. So all in all, really good show for me in this location. I call that a win. I'm really happy with it. Um, certainly not, you know, my best shows of the year or anything, but it's February and March and having that kind of sale uh, opportunity in the slowest months of the year is pretty darn good. So I'm, I'm really, really grateful that I have an opportunity to be at this craft show. I didn't tape the teardown or even my counting at the end. My husband was there that last Sunday and he doesn't want to be on tape guys and <laughs> so we just skip it. But I do have my sheets here and I think I'm gonna to try to get up a little bit closer to you. In this room, it's hard for me to figure out like showing you something. Uh, let me see if this will work. So, here it is. So if you notice I have the yellow, those are my clearance items. So if anything is on clearance, I go ahead and mark that in yellow. And so when I input that into my Soapmaker 3 software, it just reminds me that, oh yeah, I, I didn't charge full price for that item. Uh, I always usually end up having a little bit of a clearance shelf on the bottom of that rack. And that's just what these yellow highlights are for. This time I did it a little bit differently. Normally, like let me show you, see if you can see. Normally I have a taken and a sold line here and I will write in how many I sold. This time I wrote in how many I actually had left. And the reason I did that is my um, inventory. I did wanna do a fresh inventory after the show. So I actually, I actually marked how many I had left and I did the subtraction on when I got home. You know, that last hour to two hours is so dead usually at a show. It's very rarely that that last hour is busy for me. So I will take the opportunity and I count everything on my shelf. And I and I can write on my spreadsheet here what, either how many I sold or how many I have left, depending on what I want to do with that sheet when I get done. Another thing I do, guys, is I take $250 with me every single craft show. I take 205s, I, I paper clip them in 100 bundles, and $50 in ones, and again, two, two bundles of 25. And I rarely ever have to get into the second bundle of either one of those denominations. So I could probably get away with 125, because <laughs> I hardly, I don't think I've ever opened up a second paper clip, if that makes sense. But I just would rather be safe uh, if my credit card goes down or the Wi-Fi goes out or something like that. I want to be able to have plenty of cash, especially if somebody comes in with a hundred, which they have done. <laughs> so uh, I just want to make sure I have all of that. So 250 is what I take to every show. I count that at the end of the day. And I also uh, count my credit card sales at the end of the day. So I know how much I'm selling at every single day. Um, first two days were really, really good. Well over 500 every day. The second day was almost 500 or the third day was almost 500. And the last day was like not even 300 guys. It was pretty bad. <laughs> it was really slow that last day. <laughs> All right. And so was the, Oh, what else did I want to talk? Oh, my wax melt guys, my sign didn't work. I sold 15 wax melts. Now that doesn't include, I did sell three of those little donut boxes, which made me really, really happy, but I only sold 15 wax melts. I don't know. I know it's the wrong time of year for high sales in your wax melts. But I'm bummed. Ugh. So I don't know, guys. This is, this is just bumming me out, my wax melts. <laughs> That's it, that's how I do it. I hope you guys had fun with this. It's been a couple years since I showed you my setup and, and all of that. I know I've already edited part of the video and it's a little janky there in the middle. 
<laughs> it's pretty janky all the way through actually. <laughs> So guys, I will again try to link all of the things that I use to display my products in the description box. If I can find that rack, I will I will link that. Although I do, again, I think I spent too much money on it. <laughs> yeah, but I love it. And it folds up really nicely. I mean, it folds up to like, I mean, it's like less than a foot, you know, wide. Um, and it folds really nicely. So that part of it's really nice having it fold. So anyway, I think that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.